May 5. Gifts for Building the Temple Then King David turned to the entire assembly and said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. The work ahead of him is enormous, for the temple he will build is not for mere mortals. It is for the Lord God himself. Using every resource at my command, I have gathered as much as I could for building the temple of my God. Now there is enough gold, silver, bronze, iron, and wood, as well as great quantities of onyx, other precious stones, costly jewels, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. And now, because of my devotion to the temple of my God, I am giving all of my own private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction. This is in addition to the building materials I have already collected for his holy temple. I am donating more than 112 tons of gold from Ophir and 262 tons of refined silver to be used for overlaying the walls of the buildings and for the other gold and silver work to be done by the craftsmen. Now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? Then the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, the generals and captains of the army, and the king's administrative officers all gave willingly. For the construction of the temple of God, they gave about 188 tons of gold, 10,000 gold coins, 375 tons of silver, 675 tons of bronze, and 3,750 tons of iron. They also contributed numerous precious stones, which were deposited in the treasury of the house of the Lord under the care of Jehiel, a descendant of Gershon. The people rejoiced over the offerings, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord, and King David was filled with joy. David's Prayer of Praise Then David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised for ever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. O our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. We are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow gone so soon without a trace. O Lord, our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know I have done all this with good motives, and I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyously. O Lord, the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Give my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees, and to do everything necessary to build this temple for which I have made these preparations. Then David said to the whole assembly, Give praise to the Lord your God. And the entire assembly praised the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they bowed low and knelt before the Lord and the king. Solomon named as king. The next day they brought 1,000 bulls, 1,000 rams, and 1,000 male lambs as burnt offerings to the Lord. They also brought liquid offerings and many other sacrifices on behalf of all Israel. They feasted and drank in the Lord's presence with great joy that day. And again, they crowned David's son Solomon as their new king. They anointed him before the Lord as their leader, and they anointed Zadok as priest. David in his old age. King David was now very old, and no matter how many blankets covered him, he could not keep warm. So his advisors told him, Let us find a young virgin to wait on you and look after you, my lord. She will lie in your arms and keep you warm. 
So they searched throughout the land of Israel for a beautiful girl, and they found Abishag from Shunem and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful, and she looked after the king and took care of him, but the king had no sexual relations with her. Adonijah claims the throne. About that time, David's son Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, began boasting, I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, Why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom, and he was very handsome. Adonijah took Joab, son of Zeruiah, and Abiathar the priest into his confidence, and they agreed to help him become king. But Zadok the priest, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, Rei, and David's personal bodyguard refused to support Adonijah. Adonijah went to the stone of Zeholoth near the spring of Enrogel, where he sacrificed sheep, cattle, and fattened calves. He invited all his brothers, the other sons of King David, and all the royal officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benaiah, or the king's bodyguard, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Haven't you heard that Haggith's son, Adonijah, has made himself king, and our Lord David doesn't even know about it? If you want to save your own life and the life of your son Solomon, follow my advice. Go at once to King David and say to him, My lord the king, didn't you make a vow and say to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? And while you are still talking with him, I will come and confirm everything you have said. So Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old now and Abishag was taking care of him. Bathsheba bowed down before the king. What can I do for you? he asked her. She replied, My lord, you made a vow before the Lord your God when you said to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne. But instead, Adonijah has made himself king, and my lord the king does not even know about it. He has sacrificed many cattle, fattened calves, and sheep, and he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited Abiathar the priest and Joab the commander of the army, but he did not invite your servant Solomon. And now, my lord the king, all Israel is waiting for you to announce who will become king after you. If you do not act, my son Solomon and I will be treated as criminals as soon as my lord the king has died." While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived. The king's officials told him, Nathan the prophet is here to see you. Nathan went in and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Nathan asked, My lord the king, have you decided that Adonijah will be the next king and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has sacrificed many cattle, fattened calves and sheep, and he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited the commanders of the army and Abiathar the priest. They are feasting and drinking with him and shouting, Long live King Adonijah! But he did not invite me or Zadok the priest or Benaiah or your servant Solomon. Has my lord the king really done this without letting any of his officials know who should be the next king? David makes Solomon king. King David responded, Call Bathsheba. So she came back in and stood before the king. And the king repeated his vow, As surely as the Lord lives, who has rescued me from every danger, your son Solomon will be the next king and will sit on my throne this very day, just as I vowed to you before the Lord, the God of Israel. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground before the king and exclaimed, May my lord King David live forever. Then King David ordered, called Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada. When they came into the king's presence, the king said to them, Take Solomon and my officials down to Gihon Spring. Solomon is to ride on my own mule. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet are to anoint him king over Israel. Blow the ram's horn and shout, Long live King Solomon! Then escort him back here, and he will sit on my throne. He will succeed me as king, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Amen, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, replied. May the Lord, the God of my lord the king, decree that it happen. And may the Lord be with Solomon as he has been with you, my lord the king. And may he make Solomon's reign even greater than yours. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, 
and the king's bodyguard took Solomon down to Gihon Spring, with Solomon riding on King David's own mule. There Zadok the priest took the flask of olive oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon with the oil. Then they sounded the ram's horn, and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! And all the people followed Solomon into Jerusalem, playing flutes and shouting for joy. The celebration was so joyous and noisy that the earth shook with the sound. Adonijah and his guests heard the celebrating and shouting just as they were finishing their banquet. When Joab heard the sound of the ram's horn, he asked, What's going on? Why is the city in such an uproar? And while he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of Abiathar the priest, arrived. Come in, Adonijah said to him, for you are a good man. You must have good news. Not at all, Jonathan replied. Our Lord King David has just declared Solomon king. The king sent him down to Gihon Spring with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada, protected by the king's bodyguard. They had him ride on the king's own mule, and Zadok and Nathan have anointed him at Gihon Spring as the new king. They have just returned, and the whole city is celebrating and rejoicing. That's what all the noise is about. What's more, Solomon is now sitting on the royal throne as king, and all the royal officials have gone to King David and congratulated him, saying, May your God make Solomon's fame even greater than your own, and may Solomon's reign be even greater than yours. Then the king bowed his head in worship as he lay in his bed, and he said, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who today has chosen a successor to sit on my throne while I am still alive to see it. Then all of Adonijah's guests jumped up in panic from the banquet table and quickly scattered. Adonijah was afraid of Solomon, so he rushed to the sacred tent and grabbed onto the horns of the altar. Word soon reached Solomon that Adonijah had seized the horns of the altar in fear and that he was pleading, Let King Solomon swear today that he will not kill me. Solomon replied, If he proves himself to be loyal, not a hair on his head will be touched. But if he makes trouble, he will die. So King Solomon summoned Adonijah, and they brought him down from the altar. He came and bowed respectfully before King Solomon, who dismissed him, saying, Go on home. 